Hi, I'm Peggy Farron, and we are live with the Understand Photography Show, where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode number 56. Now, um, this is live on Facebook, on the Understand Photography Facebook page, but it was also being recorded, so we're going to upload it to YouTube, so you can just do a search for the Understand Photography Show on YouTube, and also, if you like to listen to podcasts like I do in the car while you're doing something else, this is also a podcast on iTunes. So again, just search for the Understand Photography Show. Now, uh, we have two uh, multi-day workshops coming up uh, this year, this season, I should say, because it's not this year, it's in 2018. The first one is Joe Fitzpatrick is leading a four-day trip to the Everglades. We, he's, he does this every year, and it's very well received because Joe knows the places to go, it's January 25th through the 28th, so it's the best time of year to be down here. There are a, a billion birds, and Joe's going to take you to all the right stops and then places. And then he also adds a lot of good and informational education. As you know, we simplify the technical at Understand Photography. Joe's also leading a trip to the Apalachicola area, which is in the panhandle of Florida, Oh my God, it is so cool up there. It's unbelievable. I went up the first time, I guess, I don't know, gosh, it's been about a year and a half ago, and I'm like, Joe, we need to start doing workshops here. So that's in April. Check out our schedule at understandphotography.com. And then we are getting quite a little um, arsenal of online classes. Our signature class is the Four Weeks to Proficiency in Photography. It just started last week, but we also have another one coming up in a few weeks. Um, and Joe just put out a new Lightroom class that's going to help you with all the catalogs and collections and all that stuff that's so hard to understand in Lightroom because Joe is so good at simplifying things. So our software classes, the format is short little videos, like, you know, two to six minute videos, and then you do the work, and then you can go back and watch it again, or you can pause it, whatever, then you move on to the next video. But then you can look things up easily if you say, oh, how did I do that in Lightroom? You can look it up and find it. So it's really, really a nice, uh, a nice format for classes. So today my guest is Reg Garner, landscape photographer. Welcome, Reg. Thank you. Now, I met Reg at... Florida Professional Photographers Convention. Convention in Orlando. And quite a few years ago five, now. Maybe five or six years ago. Yeah. yeah. We've been friends a long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, although he lives in Orlando, so this might be the second time I've seen you. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but we're good Facebook friends. And he is, Reg is amazing on Facebook. He, he's so good at posting. He posts live videos. He's got all the cool gadgets to, to make everything uh his social media presence better, <laughs> right? So now tell me, Reg is a landscape photographer, and we are going to talk a lot about your different gadgets and how to do certain okay. things that you do, because you one of the things that you are really, really good at is that slow shutter speed Oh, effect. long shutters, yes. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about that. But first, let's talk, you have a good story <laughs> about how you got started in photography. Well, I got started in photography. My, my dad was a hobbyist photographer, and he got me started when I was in junior high school. We actually would, um, you know, develop film, black and white film. He taught me how to roll film onto the canisters and develop it and, and so forth. And when uh, I was a young man, he took me he, he, to actually to meet and attend a lecture by Ansel Adams. So wow. that really got me going. So, um, yeah. That's it was, amazing. I, it's, it, it was, was that in Orlando? It was in Orlando. And he gave a lecture in Orlando. This was probably about 19, uh, in the early 80s it was. So I, I attended that and uh, learned about the zone system, which really the zone system is nothing more than, uh, you know, an analog uh, histogram, really, that, you know, seeing all the, the blacks and the, and the you know, the, and so forth. So, uh, so it was very interesting. I have a book that's uh, signed, uh, that he signed for me personally. And uh, wow. it was a real treat to meet, uh, the, you know, Ansel Adams. So that was, was that like a... And that kind of started me on. And then, you know, over the years, I've always been a hobbyist. I guess about 15 years ago, I really picked up photography on a more serious level. And uh, then digital cameras started coming out. And I started with a, a Canon, um, gosh, the, the one, the first Canon digital color, uh, Canon wow. uh, digital camera. And, um, and just kind of kept growing from there. 
So you were a, a pioneer in the digital. Well, I don't know about pioneer, but uh, but you know, and it kind of goes hand in hand because my my career is in large format printing. So we have inkjet printers up to 16 feet wide. So we see a lot of photography, we see a lot of graphics, we deal with you know a lot of high res JPEG files and you know TIFF files and those sorts of different file formats. So I've kind of grown with the digital age over the past 25 years or so from a printing aspect as well. Which probably helps your photography, right? Sure, it does. Mm -hmm. And the photography probably helps your printing, it, it, it <laughs> <does>. <laughs> right? Yes. Wow, that's so cool. Now you. It's your company? Yeah, it's my family business. It's I've worked here for uh, 41 years. It's my 41st oh year my working there. So. And you look so young. <laughs> <laughs> you. I am. <laughs> wow, that's right, because you so, started there as a teenager. Yeah, right? I was like 12, I think, when I started. Jeez. Uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's such a great story, though. Meeting Ansel Adams, I can't even imagine. Jeez. Okay, so now you live in Sanford, Florida. Yeah, Sanford's about 25 miles north of Orlando, a small city and um, of about 55,000 people. And actually, I was born in Sanford, too. I'm a third-generation native Sanfordite, if you will. Wow. So uh, I live about a mile from the hospital that I was born in. And um, I didn't always live there because I lived most of my adult life in Orlando and some of my teen and high school years in Miami. Okay. So I recently moved back to Sanford about uh, about 10 years ago, okay. and it's my home. I just love it. It's right on the St. John's River on, on Lake Monroe, so I'm, you, you may have seen some of the pictures of the old steamboat piers that uh, are just literally a mile from my house. Oh, my God. And uh, I just love Sanford, and I always see photographers in Sanford, so I, uh, a year, a little over a year ago, I founded the Sanford Camera Club. Okay. So we have... Now, a, you were... Let me go back, though, mm -hmm. because you've been a past president of the Orlando Camera Club, and that's a huge camera yes, club, yes. right? Yes, we had, at that time, that was about six years ago, I was the president of the Orlando Camera Club, and we had about 400 members at that time. Wow. So we would have 150 to 200 people at every single meeting twice a month. Twice a month? Twice a month. <laughs> it was the second and fourth Mondays, and it still is. They still meet uh, That's a twice volunteer a month. job, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it I is. I imagine that's got to be a twice a month. And I just went to their annual banquet last week and Parrish was speaking. Parrish Kohaman was our speaker. He's amazing. He's amazing. So Parrish was our keynote speaker at the uh, Orlando Camera Club banquet. And it wow. was very enlightening. That is awesome. He's actually going to be, I'll put a little plug in for the Florida Camera Club Council because the FCCC is what yep. we call it, is F3C.org. It, he's one of the keynote speakers of their convention in March. Parishes? Mm -hmm. Where is that convention? It's going to be in Fort Myers, Florida. Okay. So, a little closer to you. Yeah. <laughs> <Not much. laughs> so, yeah, he's, uh, he's amazing. I, I, I've seen him speak or heard him speak. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I've been to his galleries. He's just amazing. In Atlanta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, All right, so let's talk about, now, I met you at the convention, and you, back then you were still doing weddings, right? I was just starting to do weddings. I went through a series oh, for, okay. I was doing weddings for five or six years and uh, just not that many because of them. Because that's more of a, that group is more for portrait and wedding photographers, right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And I also should mention I was on the board of the Professional Photographer Society of Central Florida oh, okay. as well. And that's where I was with the, where I met you with that group with the, uh, the Florida Professional Photographers. That's a chapter of the right. FPP. So. Right. Right. But you were more landscape before? I've always been more landscape. landscape. I've, okay. You know, I had a studio for about four years in downtown Sanford where I had about uh, a 1,500 square foot facility. And we, nice. you know, it was, it, it, we'd, we'd bring, do some portraits and things like that. But this day job, you know, really kind of got in the way of that. So I had to reset my priorities. So my photography is primarily on the weekends and little vacations like I'm taking this uh, this week off actually this two weeks off where I've been you know pretty much down in southwest Florida the whole time how do you like it here uh, it's fabulous I mean it's fabulous I, I've got to come back it was just you know, wait till my friend Chris takes I, you out I tomorrow know. You Peggy just set me crazy. up with, uh, <laughs> with uh, Chris Hawkins right Hopkins Hopkins thank you Chris and I just spoke with Chris just uh, just an hour ago on the phone and it just so happens he's going swamp walking out in the middle of the Everglades I mean, he's talking like waist deep water. He said, make sure you have a dry bag to put your camera in. So I said, well, I got it. I'm all set. You're gonna, and I'm you're there. Gonna so. <laughs> you're going to get hooked. You're going to get hooked. And he said that we're time. going to a place that has thousands and thousands of wild orchids just 
out in the wild. So can't wait to see your pictures. So that's where I'm going tomorrow morning, first thing. He's a pretty yeah. amazing photographer too. He's a Sony guy. Okay. So okay. he doesn't. But then want prior to, carry... to that, I've been out in my kayak um, the past two days. So I had a fishing so you guide yesterday. you brought your kayak all the way down I, here I to have a, uh, Florida. A Hobie. All the way to Florida. You live in Florida. <laughs> yeah. All the way all the to way Southwest yes, Florida. I did. I have a little trailer. I put it on the trailer. It's right outside the studio now. And it, you pedal it with your feet so that you can keep your camera gear dry in your lap. Okay. And if you're paddling, you know, there's always water coming in and you're, you're paddling, you have a paddle and then you want to take it. So this way, I have a rudder that I steer with that's just by my right hand and I can be pedaling with my feet and taking pictures. Now, how long did it take you to get in shape enough to do that? <laughs> it's actually easier than you think. I have kayaked uh, 18 miles in one day with, uh, with my kayak. With your legs? Yes. Because totally. I know I went on one of those pedal boats once and oh, I Oh no it's different. I thought I was gonna die. I went to <laughs> Lake Yola in the in the swan boats one time and yeah. those things will, yeah yeah okay you know what I'm talking about. Those things will give you a workout. I mean you pedal it So it's not as hard? No, it's it's a whole different concept. Okay. And it it really goes Is very this a easy. custom made? No, kayak? uh Hobie makes these kayaks and they have about four different models with the uh, Hobie Mirage drive system. It's a, a pedal system. And they have about four kayaks that they uh, that they offer that with. And for it's they're made for fishing. Mine's a pro angler, 14 foot, perfect for photography. As a matter of fact, a very good friend of mine, Karen Ashworth, up in North Carolina, saw mine, and she says, "I've got to have one." She's a photographer as well, so she has her kayak on order. I just had a custom trailer built for it, and she's going to come down in a couple of weeks and get it, and we're going to go out. And then she's going to take it back to North Carolina. How cool! How much? <coughs> how much does it cost about? Those kayaks are uh, about three thousand, um, twenty-five hundred to thirty-five hundred dollars, depending on the model. Okay, and we'll put. Hopefully, you can sh tell me which model you have, and I'll put the yes. I'll, I'll put give the you all that information in the show notes on understand yes. understandphotography.com. <coughs> now you have a pretty cool thing on the front too, right? Um, yes, I have I saw it. a picture on your Facebook. I'm like, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of tricked out right now, and I still have a four, few more things to get, but I have on the bow of it, I put my GoPro, and of course, the last thing you want to be doing in a kayak is crawling up to the bow of this kayak to turn it on and off and turn it around because you'll fall in, in the water. And, right. And I'm usually out where there's alligators or this yesterday where there were a bunch of sharks. And so you don't want to fall out. With. So I bought this little thing and it's called, it's a, uh, it's a gimbal and it mounts on the front of my kayak. So it's facing me okay. or it's actually facing away. And, but it's a gimbal so that you can move it back and forth. And it's the same It'll technology. Keep the camera steady. Exactly. Like a steady cam. So it mounts on the front and then I have, uh, two remote controls. I have one remote. I wear them on a lanyard around my neck. Um, the first one is a um, controls the gimbal, so I can take and turn it with my thumb, and I can spin it 360 degrees up so and you can down. Do a selfie. And you can do a <laughs> selfie. And I have it on a lanyard now. Two weeks ago, I was on Lake Monroe, and I didn't have it on a lanyard, and that one's in the bottom of the lake right now. Oh, so fortunately, no. it was only a $35 remote control and not my whole camera or something. Oh, but So now it's on a lanyard, and also on the lanyard, I just bought right before this trip a remote control, voice-activated voice activated remote control for the, for the GoPro uh, itself. So you can say, turn on? Yes, I can say, turn on. I can say, take video, and you just push it, and you're not <gasps> shouting all the way to oh your, so you gosh. can just talk right here, and you can say, take picture, or take a burst of photographs, or turn on video mode, and then I can just click it and turn it on and off, on and off. That is so it cool. Is, <laughs> it is really cool. You you know you have to send me links for all I, this stuff, because okay. I'm going to put it all in the show notes. <laughs> And now, then my kayak's also set up with these ram mounts, so there you can mount anything from fishing poles to all sorts of different things. So I even have my iPad on with a iPad uh, mount, and it's hooked Bluetooth to the the uh, GoPro, so that I can see the video as it's streaming with a hoodman, you know, shield, a sun shield on it. Do you so have that, a, like a waterproof something over it, or uh, one of the waterproof cases? Wow. So. What a cool setup. Yeah. Now, the GoPro, though, is mounted on some kind of big Well, it's a suction cup. Yeah, it's just, uh, I have a gooseneck that holds it up a little bit. Okay, and now then, that you just can get and with, it's a, with a... And a suction cup. But because I have oh. carpet on the front of my kayak, I put a piece of acrylic that I cut 
to fit the shape. And you and put it I like in the bungee stick, cords and then it has of a the bungee, kayak. Yep, the, the bungee of that so that it stays and then that clicks right on there and then it's, uh, it's good to go. That is so cool. Mm -hmm. And then of course I have, you know, I'm a Canon shooter so I shoot a, a Canon 5D and I uh, usually take uh, my camera and, and two lenses usually. Usually my 11 to 24 millimeter lens which is my favorite lens okay and then a and are uh, you a canon guy for all lenses too, yes or mm -hmm. you canon go, yep all canon or 140 all canon you don't mm -hmm. you don't go to sigma or no no i okay. just use all canon gear, right? <laughs> anyway 11 to 20 is your favorite 11 to 24, 11 and, then, to 24. and then 100 to 400 i use for you know for wildlife and things like that but you know you're so low on the water and you have your camera and i've just rigged up so i can mount my really right stuff ball head onto my kayak so my kayak becomes the tripod not that it's going to be it's floating in the water but i'm shooting fast shutters but it's balanced on the is front that so on that, that acrylic sheet too no or? that's on a bar that goes it's like a h bar it goes up and over so you so it's that's right a custom thing that you're so that's doing? a more of a custom thing for me wow. for my uh, i'll have to send you some pictures you're of a that. real <laughs> fanatic aren't you uh, yeah, I kind of <laughs> That is so cool, though. So and then sometimes I even take my drone on the back, so it's big enough to put my drone. I have a, two drones, and my Inspire One is my larger one, and I've, I've taken my... Now, I don't fly it off of the kayak. I usually find a little beach where I can bank it and get out, put my drone set up, take some pictures, and... Do you put it in a dry bag while it's in the, on the kayak? No, the kayak is... Well, yeah, I usually know the waters. Now, yesterday it was raining all day, and there was some really rough seas, so I would have never taken it on a day like that. But usually, on a relatively calm day, that kayak is so sturdy, it never gets water in it. So, wow. uh, so I can just... I'm comfortable taking it out and, um, and then taking it up and taking some pictures of some... You know, some one of my favorite areas in Central Florida is the Econocachi River that runs off the St. Johns River, and it's a windy river. And what's when the you, name of it? The Econocachi. 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 So E-C-O-N. The the Econ. We call it the the, the Econ River for short. Oh, okay. <laughs> but it's really the Econocachi. Okay. Anyway, so the, go ahead. So it's off of the St. Johns River, and it's just a windy. It has all these hairpin turns back and forth, so I can fly. You don't have to you know, get 50 to 100 feet up and maybe four or 500 feet away and you get some of the most amazing pictures. Oh, that's awesome. Jeez. Yeah. I can't believe you can take your drone and it doesn't even, you don't even worry about it getting wet. Wow. But I find that I, I can't, I try to take too much. So I have to calm it down. Like yesterday, I didn't even take my camera gear. The only thing I had was my waterproof GoPros and my iPhone. But I left all my Canon gear at home or in the hotel because I was fishing. So you can't fish and take pictures. You're fishing or you're taking pictures. One or the other. Or you're flying drones. So there's too many Plus things. Plus on a on. rainy day, and you're, it's kind of. And you're confined to a little kayak, so you have to be able to get to everything, so. Did you catch any fish? We caught some snook and we caught some mangrove snapper. And what did yeah. you do with it? They were they 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 weren't big enough. The uh, the snook weren't in the in the oh, slot, so we I threw was them all say, back. You have I friends know. here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it just was a, it was kind of I a crazy day. I don't have any food in my refrigerator. <laughs> I've been gone for all this time, you know. <laughs> now, okay, so now, landscape photography mm -hmm. is your favorite. Yes. And you are amazing at the slow shutter Thank speed you. stuff. But you tell me, tell me some specific tips on that because you. <clears throat> That's slow shutter thing. is, is <clears throat> you know, first of all, I like to get up early in the morning or late in the afternoon to photograph. And the real key, the real trick or secret, if you will, if, is, um, is stacked lenses, stacked uh, filters on your lenses. Okay. So I use multiple um, filters. Uh, I use neutral density and uh, either a six stop or a 10 stop that I tell people it's like putting a welding mask in front of your lens. Mm -hmm. So what would normally be a you know, a 60th of a second exposure can now be a six minute exposure. And what that does is anything that's still a dock, trees, things like that, or tack sharp, even with a six minute exposure, rocks. But water, the sky, things that are moving get a blur to them. So it's... Uh, now, 
do you have a like a specific brand of filter or and when you say stacked do you have to buy the kind like a special kind of filter that will stack or can you just screw them all in together or how my, does that work because i use such a I, my the lens that i'm primarily using is an 11 to 24 millimeter and okay. i think the diameter on that is about a hundred and i forget i think 125 millimeters okay as opposed to a 77 millimeter of most lenses right so i actually brought some here uh, these are the um the filters. So these are 150 millimeter um, square in size. Okay. And I use, I stack two of them usually. So I'll put the six stop or the ten now, do stop. Now you have some kind of bracket. And then I have an apparatus that goes onto my lens that this holds two different filters at one time. Oh, I see. So that I don't have to sit there and, and hold them. And what brand is this? And I use uh, both Lee. the Lee filters and Singray. And they both they make those square yes they make the square, square ones they that do will both fit mm -hmm. into your bracket who yeah. who makes the bracket uh, Lee, makes, Lee the makes the bracket the bra Lee is a Florida company isn't it or I'm not sure no Singray is Bob Singray oh, oh, okay. is but I'm not okay. sure about okay. Lee maybe I've got them confused so they have them for different sizes and obviously these are usually you don't need one this large for normal lenses but my lens is so wide that I have to yeah, go with a crazy. real wide one so. So people, a lot of times I'll, I'll have a selfie of my camera taking a picture and they'll see this apparatus on the front and they say, what is that thing on your front of your camera? So and it's your filter It's the filter bracket, holder. The filter holder bracket. The holder. Mm -hmm. And then you just, you can just slide them And then you slide two in. of them in and then it moves back and forth so you can twist it. If you have a polarizer on it, you can turn it so you polarize it. Oh, okay. And um, so there's two different filters. One is the, is the uh, neutral density, six stop or a 10 stop. That's like the welding mask or sunglasses in front that slow everything down. The other thing, that the real trick is, and even if I'm not doing a long exposure, I'll use a graduated neutral filter, neutral density, which basically it, a lot of times I see beautiful, on Facebook, a lot of friends, a lot of people, novices, they, they put beautiful photographs of sunsets. Uh -huh. And the sky is perfectly exposed and there's oranges, but the bottom half is black. black. Exactly, <laughs> got it. Because it, they can't. They can expose for one, one or, or the other. If they expose for the water or the foreground, then they blow out the sky. And what are we looking for? The sunset or the sunrise? Right. So this is an example of a neutral density. So you can see it's dark on the top half, and it's clear on the bottom half. So it holds back the light at the sunset, but it gives you more exposure on the foreground. Mm -hmm. So this is the real trick. And these come in different. Different. Uh, this is a is a 0.6. Okay. And I have a point three, and I have a point nine. So and when point six and point three, what what, what does that mean? One's it's just the darkness of oh, it. Oh, the darkness. Mm -hmm. So that's when you're saying six point six. Is it six stops? I don't know what. No, it, it probably is something to do with stop. So this is a point three, in my right hand. And remember, this is a podcast as well as oh, a right, video. Oh, right, exactly. So. <laughs> okay. So the uh, so they're just different darkness and lightness of them. But the point doesn't mean stops. I, I think it relates to stops. Okay. And then the, the and you um, could stack those if you wanted to. And then I do I do stack um, that with the with the uh, you know the, the neutral density. All right. So is that a this is a six is that stop. a ten? That's a six this stop. This is a six and stop. it's black. You can't see through it. You can't see so through it. So how do you, you take a it. picture? So okay, how do I take a picture? Yeah. That's a good question. Because if you can't see through you it, you can't see through it. So yeah. you put this on front and you can no longer see. So I use I put the first filter on it where I can still see the neutral density. So I get everything set up, compose my picture, uh -huh. and get my exposure. And let's say the exposure is, let's just say it's, uh, you know, it's late in the evening, it's, it's a, a second, one second exposure. Uh -huh. So I have a app on my phone. Of course, there are apps for everything, and it's called Light Calculator. Light and, Calculator. Yep, Light okay. Calculator. And the Light Calculator, you just go to the app, and it says, okay, what is your exposure? And I say, it's a 60th of a second. Uh -huh. And then it says, what ND filter are you using? And I say a six stop or a 10 stop. Oh, I say so six stop. It does stop, the math for it you. It does the math. And it says, okay, instead of a one second, it's going to be a, you know, a, a, a two minute exposure. 
And then it has a little button that will time it for you too because most my, my camera won't go that long automatically unless I have the bulb down. And then and you so, gotta hold it. So you know, or, or if you have a, the new cable release that I have will actually do long has exposure. But it has a timer on both ways. So then it does the calculation for you. And then you just, you know, just leave it open for two and a half minutes or 25 minutes, literally. And it's amazing the difference between a six stop and a 10 stop. It's exponentially longer. So if a, if I were at a two minute exposure with a six stop, it could be a 15 minute exposure with a 10 stop wow. it, very easily. So it just depends on the brightness. You know, I use them also for, you know, waterfalls, things that you want to slow things down a little bit. Now, when you do like, I don't know if they're the river or the lake because you do a lot of the yes. silky water. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yep. Is that like, is there? Those are usually, usually a two to three minute exposures. Two to three minutes. Usually at the and time of day. And using a six stop. And I usually use a six stop. Filter, okay. Because I don't like to go, if I do a 15 minute exposure and it's sunset, well, you only get like, before you know it, 15 minutes later, it's almost dark. And you have to compensate for it's, you know, it's a two minute exposure now at this time in but in 60 the light keeps getting darker and darker right, so you right. have to give it a little bit extra of a bump and it's just kind of a, a feel for it too so that the so you're trying to get the sunset colors the colors and usually it's after the sunset after right the sun has gone right? it, it, the, you know the, the gold the blue hour you know yeah. the blue 30 minutes of you know that when the light is all golden and the sky's lit up and uh yeah. Now you, so you just, how often do you go out and shoot? Like, do you get up off of work and you're just gone out <laughs> shooting? You get up before work, you're out shooting? It, uh, sounds, both, it seems yeah. like you're out <laughs> I, you're shooting a lot. On the weekends, I'm usually out every weekend, either my kayak or at the beach. I don't live very far from New Smyrna Beach. It's about 45 minutes, so I'll go over there. But the nice thing is, is I live in Sanford, which is about 25 miles from Orlando. And I'll, when I go home, I'll go around the lakefront. And if there's some dramatic clouds, or you can tell when a rainbow is going to happen too. Do you work in Orlando? I work in Orlando. Yeah, oh, okay. I work in downtown Orlando, so oh. I have about an hour commute every day. Okay. Oh, wow. So I'm watching the clouds on the way home, and if it looks dramatic, I just drive around the lake. And if there's nothing there, I just go home. But if it's uh, you know there's neat clouds, if it's you know if it's raining towards uh, you know the sun, the sun is real bright on on. You know, in the uh, in the west and in the east, it's like a, a mist. You can tell that's a recipe for a rainbow. Uh, so then I just go wait for the rainbows. I know, and then you have to so know. So you're just driving home, and you're like, oh, yeah, I exactly. got to pull over that's and it. go over exactly. to the lake. And, and I know the spots that I want to get the foreground, too, whether it's the old steamboat docks or different, some bridges that I stop on and get out on the bridges, so I know what the foreground's going to look like. And how do you know? You just go exploring all the time? Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow, that is so cool. I tell you, I admire you because you're a spontaneous person, which is, I told you, for me, it's like, let me look at my schedule. I can, I can do something in six weeks, you know, that's my life. And so it's like, oh, you just get up and do it. And gotta, I really admire that. Well, that's I'll the biggest you. thing, I think, about nature and landscape photography. Uh, you can have all the knowledge and you can have all the gear, but if you're not there, you have to be there in the spot. And if you're if you're not there, you won't get the picture. So the more you're out, sometimes it's a bus, sometimes it it rains and you know, you don't get any shots, and but if I can get out on my kayak and bring a couple of, you know, really stellar photographs back, that's... Uh, now, this lake, is is it in Sanford, is it? Yes, the Sanford sits on lake. the south shore of Lake Monroe, okay. and then the St. John's River runs through the middle of Lake Monroe, and most people, a lot of people may not know that the St. John's River is 200, about 250 miles long, about 200 to 250 miles long. It starts down in Melbourne, Florida area, and it's the only major river in the northern hemisphere that flows north, the other being the Nile River. <clears throat> so oh, it flows no. north and it flows into the delta at Jacksonville. That's the mouth of the St. John's River where it flows into the Atlantic Ocean. So we have manatees come in from the ocean. We have, uh, and then the other thing is when it rains down south of us in the Melbourne area on the eastern coast, a couple of days later is when our water rises up. And right now, because of Hurricane Irma, we have, uh, our waters are up uh, probably eight feet. So in Sanford, eight there- Eight feet yeah, sounds like a lot of feet. <laughs> it is, it is a lot of feet. Uh, where those docks are, they are, it got all the way to the top. And they were six to eight feet from, from the water's edge wow. right now. And the water comes up over the, uh, the seawall right now into the street in Sanford. And 
And then as it recedes, we find flounder and fish. In and the streets? In the streets. Oh my gosh. I know my brother, I think it was right around the hurricane, he posted something on Instagram about, look at the fish in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so funny, because my parents, it was my parents' house, they don't live anywhere near any water and there were fish in the backyard. But the St. John's River, that's, uh, that's my playground. So, and I, can, I have about a hundred mile stretch of the St. John's River that I grew up on. I hunted, I fished, I camped. And, um, and that's where I take my kayak now. And now you wanna, you're going to start doing kayak, kayak photo tours. tours. Kayak photo tours. That's, tell, that, tell me that's, about so that. So uh, that's, I've only told, uh, kind of making my debut here. The debut, I don't <laughs> understand the photography show. <laughs> I've told a couple of close friends about this. Now and you're that's committed. About, There's I know, no getting I know, out of it now. I know, that's exactly right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm buying another kayak, okay. like mine, a pedal one, so that I can take guests out. And I'll start with one, and my goal is to have five or six kayaks on a six kayak trailer. And... You know, I've, there's uh, kayak fishing is very popular right now. Kayak fishing guide. So I've modeled it after that and looked at That's what they charge. That's actually what you just did down here. Exactly. You hired a kayak so fishing it's guide, real right? trendy, and you can get to places. And so I want to do the same thing with uh, with kayak. So I can meet a client at um, a specific launch place, or you know, up in Ocala National Forest at a spring run, or the Mosquito Lagoon over in Merritt Island uh, over on the East Coast. Um, or on the oh, St. So John's River. so it's not going to be specific to your area? It just depends on what they want to see. If they ah. want to go salt water and see, and, and what's happening, because I know the, the water tables and the wildlife and the seasons, so I can recommend where the best place to go within about, you know, a 75 mile radius of Sanford, where I live, wow. and then just take a guest and Now, give, is this going to be a half a day, a one day, a four day? A these, we'll start off with a be just uh, on the weekends, uh, either a sunrise or a sunset, you know, so five or six o'clock in the morning or, you know, for three or four hours or late in the afternoon. So we get back uh, just after dark and, um, and they're very safe. These kayaks are very sturdy so I can give a client, uh, you know, they can take their camera and put it in their lap and don't have to worry about flipping it over, don't have to worry about paddling and how to paddle. All they got to do is be able to pedal and steer with a rudder and then I can take them to different places. And it's and, easy to do that? Oh, it's simple. You've got to come up. You I'm going to do it. Are I'm you a, kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping you'll give me a discount. <laughs> 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 I definitely. But I, you know, I had a guest, and I feel bad because my mind is just so blank, because I told you I got back from Ireland, what, ye yeah. yesterday? <laughs> yesterday, gosh. And hurricane. And, yeah. Hurricane. I was in Italy for a month. I got back. I had to... I worked all weekend and then prepared for a hurricane, went through the hurricane, had no electricity when I went to Ireland, and I just got back yesterday. So, yeah, so my mind is a little mush. But um, I had a guest recently on. I feel bad because I can't remember his name. I can't think of it. But he moved recently to Central Florida, and okay. the photography is so beautiful in that area. There's just the lakes, the, the streams, the creeks. The cypress trees. And you've got, you got a little bit of yeah. old stuff up here. Down here, everything's, you know... Right. It's like new, new. Mm -hmm. you know, so unless, I mean, except when you get out in the Everglades, sure. which is where we like to go, and we mm -hmm. are right, as you notice, right here. Thank you, God, because it's so beautiful out And there. I'm working on a book also. <gasps> That's right. Tell so, me about your book. So my book I'm working on with a friend of mine, an author, Bill Belleville. He also lives in Sanford. He is an author. He has uh, written a, six or seven books, mostly on Florida, the Florida uh, nature type books, and and the ecosystem of Florida. And we're working on a book. The title is going to be um, Enchanted Places of Florida. So Enchanted be, Places of Florida. Florida. I so love it's going that. to be a coffee table book featuring, of course, my photography with double spreads and beautiful pictures from my drone, from still pictures. And um, Bill is writing the story about the healing effects that um, nature has on people, just being out in the nature and how it affects. And that's them. part of this book? And that's part of this book. And then we're also trying to concentrate on the different uh, habitats of Florida because we have a very, very diverse Florida does uh, habitats sure. from, you know, the Everglades to, you know, to the North Florida. You were telling me about a place, uh, Dead Lakes, Dead I think. Dead Lakes. I've that's go part of our, yeah, exactly. our so that's tour in, in April, yeah. yeah. 
So, so the book is, uh, is coming along. We've got uh, you know, a lot of photographs. Bill's writing the narrative for it now, and we're looking for a publisher. So that's where I'm at. Wow, that's so exciting. Yeah, it is very exciting. Wow. Yeah. So now how far along are you in there, though? I mean, um, we're probably, I'd he's say, writing. He's writing, and uh, I would think we would be ready in about six months to take it to a publisher. That's my goal. That's awesome. So you are going to try to go the traditional publishing route. Yeah, you know, I looked at e-publishing and self-publishing, and, and I, I'd much rather find a publisher. And I've got several publishers that uh, I'm just before. We need a little bit more information to take to the publisher, but if someone would just take it, do all the marketing, everything, and, uh, and take care of it, that would be the best, uh, I think, the best scenario for this book. Yeah. Because it's going to be a hardbound coffee table book, right. probably 11 by 14, a large and, book. And, you know, we are hopefully going to get our book done soon and we went the self through Amazon self-publishing okay. through Amazon and to get a hard copy book through Amazon it's so expensive there's no money in it of course there's no money yeah. getting published <laughs> yeah. that your yeah, exactly. way either because mm. by the time unless you sell millions and millions well, of if them, you have I the think. publisher you know you get a contract it's it can be uh, it can be profitable but it, just to have a like a, a paperback copy of our book I think was like $25 or something our right. cost mm -hmm. is really expensive yeah. so it's going to be an ebook yeah. you know because that's it's a guide though ours is a guide so right so that's perfect it's for an better e on mm -hmm. you know Digital. now everybody has their cell phone <laughs> you know for me I, I got the waterproof thing <laughs> with my cell phone hanging around my neck I got when I met Chris Hopkins and he started taking me out in the swamp I got all the all the gear man yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the waterproof gear because well, he'll teach you. He's he's awesome. I wish I, he won't come on my show. I wish he would, but he, you know, it's dangerous walking. So you have to have a. He'll give my you a walking. My mother's watching, so don't say it's dangerous. Well, okay, <laughs> just be careful. Just be careful. But you, it's limestone. In fact, when I was in Ireland, I was looking at the limestone. I said, I bet this is what it looks like underneath, underneath. the Everglades. Yeah. It's very. No wonder I'm twisting my ankles like crazy. <laughs> it's just, it's just, you know. So you have to be so careful because you're going to fall in holes every once in a oh, while. Well, there's no holes. It's going to be, yeah. It's just, you know. The holes are fun, though. Yeah. You know, it's warm here. It's not like <laughs> you're going to freeze to death, like I did in Ireland. Yeah. I keep trying this, and it's oh, it started working again. Now. You are well known as Mr. Sanford Photographer. <laughs> Am I right? Yeah, well, I'm pretty But when well I known first met you, I don't think you really were. No, I probably. You were just uh, kind of <clears throat> all over the place. Yeah, pretty much all over the place. But I concentrate but then, on Sanford because I shoot there so much. I've gotten to know a lot of people. And I founded the Sanford. So I used to always see people and I'd give them my car, talk to photographers, and they'd be, you know, doing a wedding shoot or, a, you know, an engagement couple shoot uh, on the lakefront. And we have just some beautiful places. In the uh, San Francisco, is just a unique place with alleyways in downtown. So even the alleyways are really fun places to photograph. But anyway, I've been, you know, just so connected because I know a lot of people in in Sanford and and um, you know, my family being from Sanford. Both my mother and my father were both born in Sanford. Wow. And my grandparents on both my mother's side and my father's side moved to Sanford about 19. Um, 1910 to 1915, so 100 oh years ago. Oh my gosh! So, <laughs> so it's so it's just my home, and then I, I I'm pretty active in a lot of different uh, you know social events and things, and and with the camera club uh, that I began just a year and a half ago, um, we just keep meeting more and more people, and uh, it's but before you started the camera club, yes. you started kind of just. Yeah. Focusing on taking <clears throat> pictures of the Sanford area. That's right, and then I hooked up with events. the city hall. Even yeah. events you did, didn't you do some? Some like events, but mostly, uh, mostly and then landscapes some and people at City Hall started liking my photographs, and so I'd share them with them to put on their Facebook and their website, and I just give them to them. I said, "Yeah, if you're promoting Sanford, my hometown, you can have these photographs," and and so they're always posting my pictures up on Facebook on their Facebook page, and then Facebook, quite honestly, is just amazing. I have about 1,500 as just an individual, 1,500 friends on Facebook. So my, my pictures go up there and people kind of follow my little trips. And, we all and, do. Uh, <laughs> I told you I'm taking credit for all your Facebook fans down in this down area. Down in this area. <laughs> because I started sharing your pictures when I first met you, yeah, I think. Because right. mm -hmm. you are an amazing photographer. Well, thank you. Thank you. And you are reggarner.com, is that true? Yes, reggarner.com. So is my two website. G's. Yes. But they sound different. Right. Reg Garner. <laughs> yeah. Hard and soft. <laughs> soft and hard. Now, 
do you do, do mm -hmm. tell me more about the Sanford thing though because I know you know you have you had a calendar published or something oh with right yeah okay we do that as well now that's not my calendar this is the third or fourth year that, <clears throat> that I, I help curate the the Sanford calendar so the Sanford Historic Trust puts out a calendar every year and we have an open call to photographers okay. so I work with a couple of people on the trust and we we uh, you know then we get some judges to to come in and judge the because we usually have 150 to 250 photographs and is, for, uh, is it a fundraiser I mean is it way that they make uh, money is it 30 bucks to enter? No actually or? they're free the catalog the calendars are, are free we give them out and there's different stores but take the them. photographers don't have to pay to and the photographers don't pay as wow. a matter of fact we're just getting ready to the it's at the printer right now the calendar is and it'll come out in a couple of weeks and there's a gallery in downtown Sanford Janine Taylor uh, has graciously given us the gallery for uh, to pick and put the 13 there's 13 pictures that are uh, picked you know 12 months plus the cover Mm -hmm. So the pictures, the, the trust pays for the printing and framing of all 13, and then we have a little opening, and then the photographers uh, get to take the pictures back, and, and it's all about Sanford, which is just a unique, uh, Sanford is, uh, it was founded in uh, 1866, I believe, so it's a, there's a lot of history in Sanford and from the lakefront to the downtown area to, as a matter of fact, one of the pictures that I submitted this year is a home. It's the second oldest home in Sanford. It was built in 1870, I believe, or in the 1870s. Wow. And it was a city, it was the manager to, the, to Mr. Sanford who founded the uh, Sanford. It was his, his manager, his business manager that lived out in an orange grove and the house is still there. It's a beautiful, uh, so the, a whole realm that's of, so of cool. different photographs. I had no idea. And, uh, and that's what I work on with uh, every year with uh, with the Sanford uh, calendar okay. project. Okay. So now, if somebody was, I, I was thinking this is a good example of somebody you know wants to be known as a photographer, maybe getting involved in their community. Sure. So you're involved with the historical society, with city hall. Mm -hmm. Yes and mostly just from giving them pictures. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not like you're on there volunteering no, all the time no. and oh god they're <laughs> on this committee and that committee you're just here here right. some pictures mm -hmm. share. I saw there's a guy in Naples doing that. I don't know who he is yet because I just started somehow started following him on Instagram because I think it was the city of Naples started okay. sharing his pictures. Yep. And that would get you started. Mm -hmm. And so I thought Oh, that's what Reg did, you know, because <laughs> you're really good at you're and really good at social media. Well, I just I just have fun with it. Instagram is the other. I've started building a, an audience on on Instagram. Now you have your pictures on your computer and and you put them from there, right? You're not just see for me, anything that's on my Instagram or Facebook is a cell phone picture. I know, I'm not I usually do a enough. picture in the moment. There's, I take a picture with my cell phone, usually with my camera set up and so forth, and I'll post that immediately. But then when I get home that evening, I go through them. I pick out you know one of my favorite photographs. I'll work on it for 15 or 20 minutes in Lightroom and Photoshop, and I'll export it out and then post it on Facebook that night. So they're all pretty current. Pretty yeah, I know. And then I'll You're go amazing back. at it. You're really good at no, it. So. I tell you what, I haven't even... My Italy pictures I put on the computer when I was in the airport going to Ireland. I mean, I just, I got home, I didn't have time, you know? I had the hurricane and all this other stuff. It's kind of an obsession with me. As soon as I get home, I have to look at the pictures that I took wow. to make sure that I, to just see what I got and download them, if nothing else, just to download them and look at them one time over so that I can be thinking about, you know, what I got and which, what pictures I can work on the next few days. That's awesome. I need to do that. But I, you know what, part of the problem, I think, because you're not a professional, I'm sitting on that computer doing Lightroom for all the customer oh, pictures all the time. Job, so then when it comes to my own pictures, I'm like, I don't want to sit at the computer anymore, you know? So now what about, okay, so now I assume that you have been published in maybe Sanford oh, magazines and yeah, things and like the, that? And the or? My Sanford magazine, my good friend Perla is the editor of the uh, My Sanford magazine and, um, and she's published me so I've had several covers of the, uh, the Sanford magazine, the Sanford newspaper, the Seminole County newspaper. Matter of fact, uh, a couple of years ago I was the artist of the year for Seminole County, Florida. Wow. And, uh, and then 
two, a year before that, I was the photographer of the year for the Professional Photographer Society of Central Florida. Wow. And, and that's from compete for that, for the professional for photographers, you, it, that's exactly. all competing. Compete competition. So that's a pretty impressive because you have some <laughs> amazing photographers in Orlando. In fact, then, you're going to give me some names for the I show. Will, yes, I have some <laughs> great names. And then seven or eight years ago, I had a picture hanging on the Smithsonian Institute of, uh, in, in Washington, D.C. for six months. How'd that happen? And that was a camera club. It actually, the Orlando Camera Club, was, uh, it was, um, there were about 20,000 entries in this Wyland Smith, uh, the Photographer's Best magazine. Mm -hmm. And they do this annually. And there's usually about 20,000 entries. Well. We actually, I actually won as a part of the Orlando Camera Club because it was a camera club entry where we could put six or ten different photographs. And my photograph was one of those six or ten different photographs. Wow. So they were all printed and they hung in the Smithsonian. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's so exciting. Jeez, what was it? What was it up? It was a picture of the windmills, a rainbow going through the windmills in uh, California near, uh, near, um, What's the name of the uh, Joshua Tree National Park? Wow, those oh, is that, that's real hilly. Yeah, it's too, very right? hilly. Yeah, my son lives out. He moved to Los Angeles, <laughs> so I went. I took him uh, when he moved. His wife went right away, and then I said, "Well, I, I'll take you." You know, and so we had a nice okay. Nice that was beautiful trip. out there. I love that area of Southern California and, and uh, Joshua Tree, Yosemite. And we stayed, um, he's like, we have to stay in this cool hotel in Joshua Tree. I can't remember the name of it. But all the like rock stars yeah. used to stay there, <laughs> oh, okay. you know. So like Emmy Lou Harris and somebody died there. For, you know, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> we stayed there. <laughs> um, all right, so what else do we want to talk about? We're gonna. You're gonna. T t you're gonna give me all the links for the gadgets. I will give you all the links for, the for my canoe. gadgets. The, yep. The kayak. The pedal now, system. Now the book is coming out. Well, mm -hmm. you're gonna. You're working on getting. We're still working. When are on you it. gonna start doing these tours? These tours um, in about a month. So That's I'll be ready. Soon. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have your kayak on order already. No, I can just go pick it up. I've, I'm selecting. I can just go get one. I've got it oh, picked out pretty much. And. Okay. So they're not custom. No, no, no. You but can they, buy them. They're made by Hobie, and there's several uh, uh, dealers all over. So you saved me. your pennies. Yeah, for, exactly. For another uh, guy. And how are you going to advertise this? Besides, just word of mouth to start with, because show. I just keep in mind I'm just doing this on the weekend. So Saturday, Sunday, probably just um, you know one or two trips a weekend, and you know, and go from there with just one person until I can get some more kayaks. Yeah, it's going to take you a while to make that twenty-five hundred. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> that's an expensive kayak, is it, or uh, is it? I don't know. I don't have any kayaks. They're like I say, twenty-five hundred to thirty-five hundred dollars for one of these kayaks. Okay. And then also, I'll have it so that when friends like you can come up, I can just take friends out there because I always go alone. I say, oh, it'd be so nice to have somebody else to to, to show this to because the scenery right. is just beautiful. Remember, I need six weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> Actually, I probably need more than them because I'm going into my busy season because I, you know, specialize still. Well, I'm still a working photographer, so we <laughs> do family. This is yep. family portrait season just right, starting. Going into the holidays. All the way going up to Christmas. It's and crazy. for a landscape photographer, it, the, you know, the, the heat of the summer is over. We're getting into the cooler months all the way through, you know, uh, into, you know, next year, into the spring and summer of next year. So this is going to be the perfect time, November. You know, October, November, December, January, February, March is the perfect time to be out on the water. Just because it's nice. Because it's nice. It's not. Because I was going to say, to degrees. me, the sunsets are, and the clouds in the summer are, are just unbelievable. They're so beautiful. They are, but. But you but, don't want to be hot. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to. It's hotter in, it, it in is. Central Florida though, because yeah, you don't sun. have the breeze like we do. I think we don't have the sea breeze, right? Because I, I don't. Mm -hmm. I was in Italy and it was super dry heat. Mm -hmm. It felt hotter to me. They're all like, oh, it's dry heat. It's not as hot. I'm thinking it feel, feels hot to me. <laughs> but no breeze. Oh, another thing I forgot to mention in Sanford, it kind of built up my, you know, my popularity is one of my favorite things to do is in Sanford, we have the uh, Lake Monroe Sailing Association and they have a race every Wednesday night. So most Wednesday nights, I'm down taking pictures of the sailors, and usually it's a small club. There's 15 to 25 boats. Okay. Sometimes there's 30 boats on a race, but they race every Wednesday. It's called the rum race. 
So I'm down there. Do you get rum? He, the winner gets a bottle of rum, absolutely. <laughs> but not you, huh? <laughs> but I'm their new best friend because I started flying it with my drone. So they're out there racing, and I'm flying my drone oh just 20 feet goodness. over their mask, and they're, you know, get, I'm getting, and I post them on Facebook, and then they grab them off and, uh, and, and just have a lot and of fun. They, everybody and then they start sharing. You share. Exactly. Yeah, so that's that just awesome. Kinda, mm -hmm. That's awesome. But you go, you go, you don't go every Wednesday. Most Wednesdays I do. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Most, well, not every Wednesday, about half the time I'm there. That sounds almost like a job. <laughs> but you enjoy it. I do. And you enjoy it. And it's just a mile from my house, so I can just go down oh, there. Oh, so it's nice. Yeah. You can just kind of pop over after work. And exactly. So, so, okay, so City Hall, Historical Society, Sailing Club. But Sanford all Camera Club. Mm -hmm. Camera Club, yeah, that's... Tell me about the camera club. So uh, you it's a started great club. it. So I started the San Camford Camera Club. How often do you meet? And we meet uh, once a month. We meet the the fourth Wednesday of every month, just okay. once a month, and we usually have thirty five to forty five to thirty five to fifty people at each meeting. We've had some wonderful wonderful speakers. I just can't tell you how good. As a matter of fact, I want to share some of those with you to hopefully get them on your show okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Thank um, you. And we have about two hundred people on our mailing list now. So. We, we send out uh, an email blast. We have a Facebook page. We don't have a website, but we do have a Facebook. It's just uh, Sanford Camera Club. Anyone that's interested can just, uh, just search for Sanford Camera Club. And we'll put that link in the yes, show notes. Yes, okay, too. good. And, you know, just meeting a lot of new people and uh, just so having what a lot do you of fun do, with what it. do you do in the club? Typically, we, um, we have field trips around the area. And, um, like one a month? Uh, about one a month, except we slow down in the summer. It was just yeah, too hot to go out. And plus a lot of people. Do you have a lot of snowbirds? or? Uh, we do have uh, uh, several people that uh, commute. Because we have, like, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. our population in this area is less than half. <laughs> it more than doubles in the winter. Mm -hmm. So our camera club is, well, the camera club here is huge, though. So yeah, even you, in the you summer. Me, how big is it? Uh, I don't know, 450, right. I Yeah, think. right, kind of like the Orlando big, club. Yeah, so this a is a little club. more just smaller. Um, now the Fort Myers Camera Club is smaller, and, and I I I like both because the big one like you can attract a bigger name speakers yes. and all, the, and you can offer more things. But the smaller ones, like the Fort Myers Cam Camera Club in the summer, it's all, you know, the experimental things. They go, they just instead of having speakers, they do things together. Oh, that's interesting. We need so, to do well. Actually, in we the do summer, have we had a couple slow. of uh, one club meeting at the sailboat races because it's on Wednesday night oh. also. So oh. we had the so we said okay instead of meeting at the historic welcome center where we normally meet, we're going to meet at the marina right where the start and finish line is for the race. So we had you know, 15 to 20 people, or more, no, probably 25 or 30 people come out with tripods wow. and, you know, and all the sailors are, what are all these people with tripods here? And that was our camera club. So we posted up pictures. I love and, that kind of stuff. That makes it more it fun. Now, more are they mostly like retirees? Oh, uh, everything. Because you're a, you're a younger area than we are down here, I, th I think. No, I don't it's, even know. it's very diverse. We have okay. uh, young to old, everything in between. And, and mostly uh, Landscape and nature photographers. Mostly I landscape. Think we, and, it, to, to me, it seems like there we have two separate groups. The you know, portraits the, and wedding people that they, you know, they that, go into the professional it, photographers, exactly. and the and rest the of us go into the regular camera clubs, and mm -hmm. then some of us, like you too, we yep. go we go both, both ways. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the you know for me, yeah. it's actually I say new, but it's been like seven years now that I got into nature photography. Okay. I still feel new at it because I don't do it as often as I would like to. But all right, well, so you're going to enjoy your swamp walk tomorrow, I am. and you're going to post beautiful pictures yes. and shame all of us who live <laughs> down here. How come we didn't take pictures that well? Now, tell me your website again. RegGarner.com. And when are you going to have the information about the kayak trips? I am going to be working on that in the next few weeks. Okay. And on my Facebook page too, you can find me just uh, just. Search under Reg Garner and that's on a Facebook. That's a personal. Facebook. That's a personal page, but I put a lot of my, uh, you know, my photographs on there, and then Instagram also, just Reg Garner under Instagram. Okay, and all of that will be in the show notes as well. So thank you for coming. Thank you. I keep you. holding on to this, and the thing <laughs> broke a long time ago. I'm like, oh no, I have no PowerPoint. That's I your can do it. Right, I keep <laughs> looking at the same screen over there. <laughs> but. All right, thank you for having me. I hope me. everybody will forgive me for being a little disorganized after too much oh. travel. I am staying put. I'm not going anywhere until next year. 
and then I don't know where I'm going to go. But well, maybe I'll go come visit to Orlando. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably I'm going to try to do that sooner than later because I don't like to be cold. I don't want to be kayaking when it's December. No, you don't. Wanna, yeah, no December. But there's well, I go. It I go gets cold up there. I lived in Orlando. It gets <laughs> cold up there. It gets too cold down here in December for me. I like. Well, to I go be swimming warm. every Christmas morning. Do you really? At a spring, I go to. Um, at to, a spring uh, that's we, seventy-two it's, degrees. Yeah, it's warm. Yeah, are you crazy? Every every <laughs> Christmas, time, that's where I start Christmas off. So I start. I go to Wekiva Spring State Park, and I go swimming in the springs. And, I don't uh, even and like then to I go swim there Christmas when it was my family. summer. It's always seventy-two degrees. It's so cold. It's, well, it's cold outside, but it's warm in the water because it could be forty or fifty degrees, but it's seventy-two, so it's warmer. So that's your tradition. That's huh? my tradition. Anybody go with you? No, I just no, did because so. nobody's that crazy. <laughs> 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 well, thank you for being on the show, thank and I'm you for glad that me. you're staying in our area for a little while to get a taste of it. I'm just having a blast, so That's I'll be back. Awesome. So, um, thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show, episode number 56. Since I don't have my PowerPoint, I'm guessing <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have all the show notes, include, including all the links to all the gadgets that Reg has um, and talked about. We're going to have all those links on the show notes in the understandphotography.com. Um, I can't even remember my guest for next week. Remember, I wrote it <laughs> down. Did, I, oh, my guest <laughs> next week is Barry Howe. He's an aerial photographer here on Marco Island, and he's a film photographer who photographs out of an airplane and then sells his fine art aerial photography. So he's my guest for next week. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography Show. I'm Peggy Farron. We'll see you next week.